hail and well met on this beautiful Sunday evening, my warriors of light and darkness, my defenders of Eorzea, my ex my inspectors extraordinaire. This is your pal Rune Weird back with another episode of the Hildebrand Manderville quest line. So without further ado, let's load that up. Man, that trailer just, uh, whew, makes me want to go back to heaven's word to tell you what. Hope everyone is fine this evening. Good evening, uh, Ashen. Uh, yeah, that uh, <laughs> let's fight like men and ladies and ladies who dress like men. Oh, my God. There is so many good moments last night that just. Uh, I mean, I don't know, like it is just so much fun. Uh, <laughs> and my poor buddy Crimson, <laughs> the Hildebrand storylines giving him nightmares. Uh, which which I under which I can understand um, is it is definitely out there. But yeah, Gilgamesh is such a great character painting a rooster green to replace in Keto. The I always like to think I I always like to think that the rooster is in Keto, right? Like, <laughs> oh my god! Uh, the only strange thing about Gilgamesh in 14 is also Yojimbo, uh, which Yojimbo is technically a separate character, a wandering warrior who fights based on how much coin is offered. Um, yeah, see, I... And, and once again, because I don't... I mean, I only know the 14 universe, right? Like, I mean, I, you know... I know Gilgamesh is from other is is from other parts of the Final Fantasy chain. Um, is a genetically modified weapon of war should have painted a cat green. Oh yes, yes. And you know Jimbo is Final Fantasy ten. Okay, cool. <laughs> but I mean, this is this is the cool thing to me. Gilgamesh is just. Gilgamesh, right? Like, you know, until I get to the other to the other parts, these uh, you know, I find out by you and Tonics and and other uh sagely people of uh Final Fantasy, uh, you know, if a character is from another uh version or whatever. Um but but it's kind of like I consider myself lucky just because, you know, like I once again, I only know of these characters as these characters, right? All right. Oh, it looks like looks like someone from Assassin's Creed just came in. Uh where are we going to? Oh, the gazebo. Yes. Uh. Adelshire. Yeah. Let's get that bad boy over. Take some of that gill. our folks 
And truly, this magnificent settlement is a testament to the hard work and camaraderie of her Uplander and Gobi citizens. Yes, well, I'm just glad we no longer be we are no longer being pursued by fire breathing dragons, musket wielding crabs, and bomb throwing goblins. You know, the, the other ones. But they were no match for Lady Julian and that pan of hers, am I right? <laughs> I want to see her make the bad gobies fly again. God sakes, Hildy. Except the room, this lot would be dead in the ditch somewhere if it weren't for me. Yeah, yeah, that's you. You are a bomb throwing goblin. Yes, yes, she is. Nonsense. I would never let any harm come to my loyal assistant or my beloved son. Oh my god. Um, if I may interject here, which is which is the best angle we, we can get the group at here. Ah, that's pretty good. Now then, let us split up and question the good people of Idleshire. My keen inspector's sense tells me that one of them has knowledge of the false knights we seek. Oh, Seer, just kicking idly at, uh... Oh. Sorry, Sedane. I gotta, gotta show off my newest acquisition. <laughs> Hey, get him. All right. Anyways, back, back at her. This car. Oh, yes, yes. Ludox knows of Grand Sirs. Speaking up, lenders keep to selves, mingle not with Gobby thought, but each to one, Ludox says, no questions, only jingle shine. The chicken of war, not cowardice, an actual chicken. <laughs> Damn straight. Bump, 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 bump. Whoa, that was cool. Oh, I know all about the Grand Sirs. They keep to themselves in that building of theirs south of the round spot. You'd best watch out, though. They're a dangerous bunch. Liable to kill you for looking at them cockeyed. It's entirely possible that we've gone com that I've gone completely and utterly mad. But are you, perchance, the long-lost twin sister of Nishgardian noblewoman? What? I, uh, look behind you. A three-headed gobu. Oh, my God. <laughs> Why do I feel like I've not seen the last of that old woman? Oh, you must be talking about them grand sirs. They drifted into Idleshire some time ago, as I recall pay visits to the great library though I couldn't tell you why oh because there's lots of magical items and shit in there probably just just hazarding I guess If only we had the testimony of a concerned citizen which would conveniently direct us to the villain's precise location. The Grand Sirs are holed up in a building to the south of the markets. Good show, Rune. And every time I see this moment, uh, uh, Crimson pointed out something that I immediately thought of, but he reminds me of Orko from He-Man. 
There, that one. Come, let's inform the others. It would seem that no one is home. There's not we can do, but wait then. Papa Hildy, Papa Hildy, I just want to say that, that I really like this place. I think that you and me and Mama Nashu could have lots of exciting adventures if we stay here. Hmm, you may be right, Gigi. This community seems to have fostered an enlightened free society, welcoming of honest souls willing to work and contribute to the greater whole. Did anyone happen to see a gazebo on the way in? As I live in stow, Hildebrand, Elidor, Maximilian, Manderville. Zidane's companion, Vivi, an automated black mage of war. Okay, that's freaking cool. Could that be? I say, could that be slow fix coin toss? Do you know this little gobby, Inspector? I most certainly do. My master slow fix was my fir very first employer. Awesome. I gotta straighten that out. Okay, that's better. Uh, yeah, my first employer. The skull! When traveling through Danlin long ago, Gobby Block was waylaid by Uplander bandits. With no jingle shine to pay brass blades, we had no way to backtail goods. Until we make busy deal with gentlemen Uplander, that is. As fast as he finds up on their bandits and brings much bangy boob and returns to goodly gobby's missing goods and great justice. Henceforth, Slowfix gains new appreciation for Uplanders, but for chance encounter with gentlemen Uplander, he never conceives of egalitarian utopia. Bisco. Even one even may claim Hildy a founding father of Idleshire. With metaphorical tongue flaps, that is. Vivi is the reason I will never 100% complete Final Fantasy IX. This jump rope mini game is too hard. Oh shit! Ha ha ha! Oh, the memories! It was a near thing, for the bandits were clever enough to see through my ingenious disguise as an innocent milkmaid. But in my haste to escape, I tripped over a barrel of fire sand. And as they say, boom, gobby doom. Of course, he dressed up as a milkmaid. Because why wouldn't you? Oh, no busy deals for the wicked. No busy tales indeed. But leaving that delightful anecdote aside, ye gods, Master Slovex, just looking at what you and your flock have made of these runes is making me big eyes. And many dresses, ladies, yes. Yes, yes. Let's go. Gabby Block has come a long way since wandering days, but we have not forgotten gentlemen Uplander's kindness. Slowfix is here to offer a hand lending. Well, far be it for me to refuse. My son Gigi has grown quite fond of your magnificent city, and so I should like to stay here with him and my assistant for a time. We would not require much in the way of accommodations. A humble gazebo, for example, would more than suffice. It's 
people do realize you don't live in a gazebo, right? Like, why settle for a gazebo when perfectly good estate right behind you? Residents are building in arrears and Slowfix happy to evict them. But we were pursuing the fiends who lived here on suspicion of defrauding young women. Rod, Slowfix is egalitarian utopia. This he will not abide. All the more reason to let gentlemen up under and his flock stay in start instead of grand sirs. No need for jingle shine either. Ow. Huzzah! A giant gazebo to call our own. I, I do not know what to say. Thank you, Master Slowfix. Thank you. No need for teary eyed tongue flaps. Got me block is possessed of moral obligation to repay gentlemen Uplander for past generosity. Enjoy new gazebo and get luck with hunt for grand sirs. I am Pat Bahildi. To answer this as our gazebo, is it okay if I draw our family crest on it? I can think of no better way to celebrate this joyous occasion, and perhaps draw the ire of our new home's former tenants. Come, let us go and purchase some paints together. This gazebo shall be our cam a canvas. It's not a gazebo! God, these guys drive me nuts, and I love it. Now has gone and got himself a son gazebo. Bloody hells, if he really thinks I'm going to let him keep on playing at being a father. That's a family crest, all right. Still no sign of the notorious Grand Sirs. I dare say we're going to need more paint. Oh, jeez. Brand has never been a patient man. I don't trust anyone over 60. <laughs> oh, much as it pains me to admit it, a gentleman's stamina is not without limits. I dare say I could do with a spot of tea. Hey, Inspector, is it just me? Or have those two been looking at us for the past few minutes? Yeah, you think? Oh, just quite normal behavior for my adoring fans, I should think. When finally presented with an opportunity to meet their idol in the flesh, all too many succumb to their fear and flee. Or maybe, just maybe, they were the grand bloody sirs. 
Come on, come on, they're getting away. to me you dastardly rapscallions you have nowhere to run reveal yourselves at once I shall not ask you again come forth grand sirs Name yourselves and answer for your misdeeds. <laughs> ah. And worms, the silver spear which hath pierced the very heavens, oh land! Master of magic, ancient and awesome, the divine hand which hath defeated all maladies, save senescence and incontinence, Goon spot! Grand Sirs Excelsior! I don't know whether to laugh or to cry. Mayhap both. Grand Sirs, ahem. <clears throat> Grand Sirs! You stand accused of willfully and unlawfully convincing young maidens of Ishgard to attend private parties under false pretenses, thereby inflicting upon them terrible financial and emotional distress. I, Hildebrand, agent of inquiry, inspector extraordinaire, am come on behalf of these poor defenseless innocents and to see that no others are made to suffer as they did. Now lay down your arms and surrender yourselves into my custody. Ah, the audacity of this boy. You should feel ashamed of your words and deeds. Oh, shit. Ah, that's you clapping. It will rule the day and rue it on! Oh. God's how I've missed this. The air streaming past, the blood pumping, the taste of copper on my lips, the slight dizziness. It was on a day like this that we met, wasn't it? And when we soared into those azure skies, we never truly came back down. Oh no. You 
my eyes to see. Pasty of my heart descended from Halone's halls to guide me to her bosom. My beloved, my everything, long have I waited for this moment. Take me in your arms once more and lift me higher, higher, higher. Higher, higher, higher. Oh. oh, man. Oh. Garland? 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 Oh, oh God. Alas, poor Orland. I knew him not in the slightest, but he seemed a decent man. To cannery and attempted murder notwithstanding. Ha ha ha. You will rue the day and ruin our heart. I don't know why they're giving us the flashback, but you know. Oh, shit. Wait, I've seen this before. All too recently. Um, yes, anyway. <laughs> awesome. He's mostly dead. If the Master of Magic's an ancient awesome here acts with all haste, the man may yet be saved. You remember how to heal, don't you, buddy? Oh, God. Oh, you were referring to me? I see, I see. With all haste, was it? Yes, yes, I'll, I'll get right on that. Oh, my God. Oh, mournful voice of creation. Send unto me a creature of the abyss, my thrall to command, that I may smite. No, wait, that's no good. Hmm, let, let, let me see. Something of a rather less controversial tradition, yes. Something with more pep, a vortex of biting winds to rend the flesh and smite my foes. Oh, no. Those? I thought you were friends. Oh, God. Ah! Uh-oh. <laughs> the hate ran at bugger me with a bleeding cable. My back! My back! Uh, it would seem I've underestimated you lot. That makes two of us. Enough, leave them be, or do you not care what becomes of the mammoth? 
Oh, buried in the ground face first will never get old. No, sir. No, it will not. Oh, it's her. Oh. Poor Gigi. Gigi! But when? How? I thought I recognized you. First in Ishgard and then in Idleshire. You've been following us since we left the capital. Bear of faces, fair and fearsome. The midnight shadow which hath deceived kings and queens. Doris. Doris. You can't possibly have been so naive, naive as to think we'd not see through your ridiculous disguises. And yet here you are, so effortlessly and easily lured into our trap, for which we are most grateful. Mind, my companions are hardly cut out for life on the road. All has been in preparation for this moment. The parties, the petty schemes. From the first, the objective of this grand design has been this singular moment. I swear to you, if you harm Gigi in any way, we have no desire to hurt the boy, but we require his help to reclaim that which is rightfully ours, our youth. Oh, shit. Confound it. I can't see. Damn, they're very slowly getting away. <laughs> oh, my. And he's just using, like, the smallest healing spell on him. Papa Hildy. GG. Stay strong, my son. I swear I shall find you. But they're right there. They're right there. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, ho, ho, ho. wow. Twelve strike me down for a fool. So desperate was I to seize the Grand Sirs that I failed to discern their true intent before it was too late. And now poor Gigi is in their clutches. What if I never see my beloved son again? I suppose we ought to be prepared we ought to be prepared for the worst. They could be halfway to Radzit Han by now. Oh my god, they're probably just past that cliff. I very much doubt that, given that they were moving at an uh, adamantois's pace. Little milk sops, right? Let's get after the old buggers. Like, oh my god. Huh? That's what my m mentor used to call me, among other things. Oh, the memories. The <laughs> milk sop. Oh my goodness. Come on, fatter cat. Oh, by the way, I thought of you, uh... <laughs> I thought of you last night, Ashen. Uh, when I was, uh, when I was playing... Can't remember where... Can't remember where I teleported to is somewhere in Corthus. Um Well, yeah, like a milk sops like, you know, like uh like you know, like uh the like you know, a piece of plain white bread, right? Like, you know, that gets really soggy, uh and kind of distasteful, so. 
Um, no, not not Zack Squats. There was another there. I now I don't know whether I don't know if they were a tank, but they were in a tank. And that's the first time outside of you that I've even that I've seen the tank. So I was like, oh, my God, there's a tank here. But he didn't look like a tank. So I was like, nah, not making me giggle like it does when Ashen shows up because he's a tank in a tank. <clears throat> All right. Oh, it seems the Grand Sirs have caught what have been caught once more by the very inspector that was trying to catch them. Yeah, it gotta be a tank in a tank, right? That's what I'm thinking. How ironic. Also, how premature. We have them, yes. But they still have GG. Damn it, if only some manner of opportunity would present itself. Ask and ye shall receive. We can ambush that wizened dragoon, take him hostage, and demand an exchange. Inquisitor Seer, you disappoint me. A gentleman cannot condone the violent kidnapping and ransom of his elders. No, no, we shall approach this problem of, as paragons of honor and virtue. Rune, will you stalk and subdue the Grand Sir? Then relieve him of his armor. Sure. How is stripping an old man naked more gentlemanly than taking him hostage? Rest assured, I shall reveal all soon enough. Godspeed, Rune. Uh, yeah, okay. Not sure how the Warrior of Light gets suckered into that, but, you know. Do, 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 do. Oh, I knew you'd... Wait, who are you again? Something awfully familiar about those muscular forearms. Those strong yet tender looking fingers. I say, would you be so kind as to massage my shoulders, young man? There's this lingering ache, this tension that God spark gets to seem to soothe with his magics. Remove my breastplate? Oh, of course. How silly of me. Hey, lend me a hand with the straps. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, Sugarfoot. Truly, young man, you are a saint. Oh, I swear it's the little things you begin to appreciate. My dear departed wife used to help me with my armor, you know. Right, right, I should be seated to better receive your tender ministrations. <laughs> oh, the healing tingle. Would that I had a tincture of salamander with which to treat these aches. My little pigs they used to spread some on my chest and under my nose to help me sleep through the night. Come, um, do not be shy. Work those soothing fingers into each and every knot. Slowly make me forget my troubles. Hey, Chad, skeevy old man. Ooh, harder, harder, higher, higher. Close your eyes and dream. Ha ha 
The old dragoon's soft snoring suddenly stops, and you begin to fear you may have borne witness to his final moments. Leaning closer, you extend a hesitant finger only to stop short when a sudden spasm signals the resumption of his labored breathing. Oh my god. With the utmost care, you remove Orland's sabatons and breaches, leaving the sleeping old man exposed to the elements and at the mercy of the nearby ravenous bears and tentacled marbles. May he rest in peace. Oh, that's horrible. Oh, my goodness. Ooh, look at the sky. Looking pretty. Ah, oh, my stalwart assistant. By your return, I gather you have taken care of the dragoon. And by take care, I mean afford him all due courtesy as befitting a man of his years. Whilst returning with the equipment I require. Capital. And without further ado, I shall disguise myself as Orlon and free GG from captivity. But you two look nothing alike. They may be old and slow, but they're not blind. Oh, ye of little faith, you are in for a treat, for you shall have a front row seat to this magnificent display of Mandervillian guile and subterfuge. Hey, is it time for dinner yet? We just ate you, daft bugger. And where in the hell's is Orland? I know he's got to take a piss every hour, but damn it, he can at least be quick about it. Greetings, <laughs> fellow antediluvians. I have returned. Wow. Uh. Oh, bollocks. It's about time. What? Oh my god. Okay, no, that's bollocks. Pack up your things. I want us back on the road in 10 minutes. Or we do that, we must first release young Gigi here. This behavior on becoming a gentleman to keep children in cages. What in the seven hells are you blathering about? He's going to get away. No, he will not. See? Still here within my care. Right then. On a completely unrelated note, 
I shall now take the boy with me on a brief sojourn into the wilderness. Here, take me. It's working. He's about to walk out of there with Gigi and they won't even try to stop him. So far, so good. Uh, I'm cold. There are marbles after me. Do 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 do. <laughs> I'm me, but you're also me. Well, that can't be unless this is it. This is the moment when my life flashes before my eyes. Oh, my dearest Pigsney, we'll be together at last. Oh, my God. Ah. Oh. Wow. Oh. Imposter, how dare you attempt to trick me with a ruse so hackneyed it would make a minstrel blush. Oh my god. Be god, I never realized dying would hurt so much. Oh my god. Now's our chance, GG. Come with me. Vivi, wait! Ah. My son, what's gotten into you? Vivi, Vivi, where have I heard that name before? Remember who you are, Vivi, what you are. A creation of the great Charlie and Archmagus Quan. 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 I was given life by Grandpapa Quan. I remember now. We lived together and he taught me many things about the outside world. What? What exactly do you remember, my son? Everything. Yes, everything. I remember that Grandpapa Kwan created me. That he took care of me, raised me, and that we were very happy. But then, but then he abandoned me. Grandpapa Kwan abandoned me. He believed you were flawed, Vivi, that you lacked the power to turn back the hands of time and make him young again. And so, in his ignorance, he cast you out and died all alone. Sounds like an asshole. Turn back the hands of time? Then what we witnessed in the Crozier with the Duke's priceless vase... That power could be brought to bear on people. But wait, how do you know all this? You couldn't have possibly been associates of this Archmage's Quan. 
We found his journals during one of our many trips into the great library. Scavenging for our valuable relics is one of the few ways we have left to make a living. We were famed heroes of the war in our prime, with fortunes to match. But no soldier has the strength to triumph over time. And before we knew it, the hour of the sheath was upon us. Ishgard no longer had need of our services. So we came here to eke out a living, to keep doing what we do best until our bodies wouldn't let us. Imagine our surprise when we stumbled upon the opportunity of a lifetime. A second lifetime, as it were. A mammoth with the power to take that which was broken and restore it to its prime state. To turn back with its temporal magics and give us back our misspent youth. If you already take me, this is all so... I don't even know if there's a precedent to determine whether or not this constitutes heresy. We knew where to look even. With the journals, we determined that the mammoth was somewhere in the Western Highlands. A chance for a second chance was within reach. Then we were forced to watch as you imbeciles pulled Vivi from the snow, nearly ruining everything. Vivi, listen to me. Come with us and we can help you to unlock your true potential. Just think what you could accomplish were you to master your magics. Not only could you make us young again, but you may even have the power to restore life to Archmage's Quan. V V V V V Impossible. No magic can truly return the dead to us. At best you can animate a corpse, and I need not review the precepts to declare that products that the products of necromancy are abominations in the eyes of the Fury. Well, not only that, I say I say F Archmagus Quan. GG, wait! What of our adventures? What of our gazebo? You are a Manderville moment! You have always been so kind to me, Papa Hildy, and I will forever be grateful for that. But Grandpapa Kwan made me. He made me, and I miss him so him so even if it fails i have to try what are you doing they're getting away we have to stop them oh no he he's mayhap we must respect chiji's decision very wise inspector very wise so that's the end of the chapter, eh? You're giving up and coming back home? I too made a decision long ago to become a traveling inspector and I have ever stood by it. Mayhaps it is from this singular stubbornness of mine that Gigi took inspiration. Nay, I cannot abide it. He is my flesh and blood, my son. I dare not let him use his temporal magics to pervert the natural order. Aye, it falls to me, his father, to ensure that Gigi keeps to the righteous path and only utilizes traditional methods of zombification to raise the dead. Oh my god. Traditional methods. Inquisitor Seer. I must applaud your dedication to your work and cannot thank you enough for all you have done on our behalf. Yet I fear we continue as we are, GG may be driven to rash action. Therefore, I would ask that you suspend your pursuit of the Grand Sirs for a time, that I might be afforded the opportunity to convince my son to return peacefully. 
Well, seeing as, seeing as how we can only guess at the full extent of Gigi's powers, it might prove dangerous to act aggressively should he choose to use them. I knew you would understand. Right then, there's no time to waste. Nashu, let us retire to our new gazebo and discuss our plans. Suppose I'd have been a shame that he'd given up that easily. Though that means I'll have to stick around even longer. On the other hand, if that bloody marmot's really got the power to make them young again, then... <laughs> oh, don't you worry about that hot mommy Manderville. I said I'd suspend my pursuit, and I will. That doesn't mean I won't continue my investigation into the mammoth and its powers in Ishgard. All right. Off we go. All right, folks, I'm just going to grab a very quick top up of my coffee. I want to thank everyone who's popped in to check out the channel tonight. Uh, please hit that like and subscribe button if you've not done so already, as it does help the algorithm of the channel grow. Uh, and it means a lot to me, guys. Uh, I love, love all the support, and I love this community as it grows. And yeah, I shall be right back.
Thanks for hanging in there, folks. We are back. Ah, oh, I see you saw it fit to return to the capital as well. The Inquisition has a rather large collection of heret uh, heretical tomes, including many of Charlian origin. I had a mind to scour them for information on temporal magics. This, of course, all for the sake of confirming the mammoth's heretical origins. Yes, uh, only that. Hmm. Why are you looking at me like that as if to imply that my interest in these matters is more than a professional one? I'm sure I don't know what you're not talking about. Thank you, Rune. That'll be all. Okay. Freaking love this so much. Like if this was if this was like a TV show or like a regular cartoon, I would totally watch it. Seer is a man at the end of his tether. We need to speak, Rune. I've been scouring the archives for any information regarding temporal magic since last we spoke, and the results have been rather troubling to say the least. As you may or may not be aware, ancient Alag is portrayed in the Incuridian uh, as, caution, as a cautionary tale. The great empire brought low by its vanity and hubris. However, there are certain apocryphal texts, texts in which the Alagans are cast in a more sympathetic light, if not outright exalted. It was in these texts that I found references to temporal magics once wielded by Alian mages. Said magics could be used to halt or even reverse the temporal state of a given object. These accounts are to be believed, and if Gigi's abilities and these magics are one and the same, then it may well be possible for him to turn back the hands of time for the Grand Sirs, much as he restored the Duke's priceless vase. That being said, there's no telling how this will work in regard, uh, with regards to a living being. Consider, if you will, that the vase was filled with water when shattered. Even if the vessel were restored, what would become of its former contents? Would it be filled with water as before? The very same every drop returned, or would it be different water? Or would the water once split be forever lost? Or spilt. I speak of the soul, my friend, for even if one could use these magics to restore the dead to life, would they be as they were before, with all the same thoughts and memories and feelings? The Grand Sirs are convinced that they can regain their lost youth, and mayhap they can, but the dead who have entered into Halone's halls cannot return. They cannot. Yet Gigi is nevertheless resolved to try and resurrect Archimagus Kwan. Ah, speaking of which, according to some Charlian texts in the archives, Archimagus Kwan was an accomplished scholar known for his study of ancient Allegan magics. Further evidence that Gigi's abilities are likely derived from ancient traditions, I suppose. But more importantly, I learned the location of the Archmages' former residence. Mayhap we could find something of interest there. Something which can help us persuade Gigi to change his course. I had a mind to summon Inspector Hildebrand and make the journey there together. Would you be willing to join us? Certainly. Excellent. Then let us be about our business. 
I I saw you he he heretic. I beg your pardon. Are you accusing me of being a heretic? Yeah, yes, you inquisitor seer. I saw you sneak into the archives and seek out the f forbidden tomes. I saw the mad light in your eyes as you partook of, of the forbidden knowledge. Oh, for the love of... I did all that for my investigation. Aha! Uh -huh. you, you, you admit your crimes. Uh, you did secretly without permission in blatant contravention of our rules read f f forbidden tomes then by virtue of authority v v vested in me by the s s supreme sacred tribunal of Holonic inquisitory doctrine you you stupid ignorant are you all so desperate to keep your God's damn jobs that you'll go around accusing all the world and his wife of heresy. Is that what we've been reduced to? I'm sick and tired of looking for heretics in every bloody shadow. Of trying to guess the secret sins of everyone I meet. It's stupid and pointless. And we're better than that, damn it. We're better than that. Ooh. If, if you will not surrender yourself, then I have no choice but to, to inform my superiors. Yeah, you go do that, buddy. Well, that... That all came tumbling out, didn't it? suppose there's no point in trying to convince myself that I have no personal investment in this matter, or that I still have a professional one. Somewhere along the way, I stopped looking for the guilty and started looking for... for the truth, perhaps, and a way to help those in need. There's no place for people like that in the Inquisition, is there? And it's only a matter of time before that stuttering fool comes back with an armed guard. Let us depart for Idleshire at once. We need to find the inspector. Man, foundation is just gorgeous. I want to live here. Idle Shire it is. And oh, come on, Enkidu. <laughs> the family crest. Oh, my God. It would seem we arrived too late. Inspector Hildebrand has already gone off on his own to confront the Grand Sirs. They came back briefly to trade Jingleshine for supplies and whatnot, you see. And the gobby's ear caught the trading tongue flaps about killing dragons in the Forelands. When the inspector learned about it later... He said he had to go after them right away and back take Gigi. He said he had a duty, not as an inspector, but as a father. Look at that. It's got no obligations to a bloody mammoth, especially one that chose to leave of its own free will, as I recall. I swear, I turned my back on that boy for one bleeding second and he loses his goddamn mind. I'm afraid he might try to do something reckless. Don't you think we should try to find him and offer hand lending? 
<laughs> He's talking like a gobby. I love it. I'm rather more concerned about what will happen if the Grand Sirs attack. Or worse, kill any of Race Volga's brood. But first things first, I suppose. Rune, would you be so kind as to assist Mr. Snashu and Julian in their search for the Inspector? I will pay a visit to Archmage's Quan, Archmage's Quan's abandoned abode in the meantime. Oh, and before you think to refuse, know that you need not fear for my safety. Let us just say that our singular experiences together have inured me to the harsh realities of, well, reality. Huh? Could it be the scrawny little shites finally found his spine? Oh, poor, poor seer. Let's start by heading to Tailfeather. I reckon the inspector probably went there first to ask after the Grand Sirs. So if we do the same, we're sure to catch up with them eventually. Right then, I say we split up and make inquiries separately. If you learn anything about the inspector or the Grand Sirs or Gigi, come and tell me. Oh, you got it, you crazy Nash, you. Guardians with the mammoth. They were here, I claiming tall and sundry that they're going to slay the greatest dragon of them all. Gods only know if the naive fools are serious. No. Three dragon slays on the mammoth, eh? I'd call you a mummer if I hadn't seen them come through earlier, boast of how they are off to kill the biggest one yet. The nice bow. Very, very cool looking bow. Daft sods. They are uh, for Annex Trine. Not quite sure what their intentions were, but they're awfully confident. Not much I recall. I see. So the Grand Sirs were headed for Annex Shrine. And my dear boy wasn't far behind them either. What are we waiting for? Let's go! Let's go! Thanks. 
man. Just gorgeous. Ha <laughs> The poor unfortunate soul who bears a striking resemblance to Orland is quite firmly embedded in the earth. Would you look at that? The inspector sure gave him what for. That may be, but what did the other two get to? Not to mention the mammoth. Why don't we pull him out and ask? Oh, having said that, it looks easier said than done. Oh, how silly of me. I'm sure you've got more than enough strength to yank him free, right, Rune? Oh, boy. Well, I'll be. He's wearing some sort of magic mask that makes him look like just like the inspector. Just like that man of a thousand faces back in Eldar. No, that's Hildebrand, all right. There's no fool in a mother's eyes. I say, what trouble has my beloved son gotten himself into a... Uh, I say, what trouble has my beloved son gotten himself into this time? Why, hello there, Lord Godbert and Inspector Seer. How did you two end up traveling together? Blind fortune, you might say. I was too far from Tailfeather when night began to fall, but fortunately Lord Godbert chanced to find me wandering in the wilderness. Lord Edmund told me all about this recent trouble with the Grand Sirs, as well as Hildy's investigation. The father cannot help but take an interest in his son's affairs, can he? As for me, I was eager to share with you my latest findings, namely Archmage's Quan's research notes. Mm, uh, I haven't slept like that since I was buried in the lichyard. Oh my god. Well, well, I must confess no small measure of embarrassment to be found in such a state, having been so unceremoniously disposed of by the Grand Sirs. But ignominy notwithstanding, I, I am most grateful for your succor, and pleasantly surprised to be reunited with you all. This wouldn't have happened uh, had you waited for us instead of... Wait, why the hell is he still wearing that rubbish? An impenetrable disguise is essential when consorting with the criminal elements. Alas, it would seem the Grand Sirs have grown more perceptive in their newfound youth. Wait, do you mean they've already regained their youth? What about Gigi? Did you see him? Was he behaving strangely? Now that you mention it, his warm, soulful eyes were rather more pointy than I remember. I the fear ain't not pointy. According to Archmage's Quan's notes, that's a sign Gigi's using too much magic. If he carries on like this, his aether will be expended, and he'll end up not more than an empty husk. Oh, this is terrible news. We must catch up to the Grand Sirs at once. Do you know where they are headed? All I heard was that they were keen to slay dragons. They were bound for the Churning Mists, a place called Zenith, to kill a great worm named Nidog. Oh my god, good luck with that. Really? Really? That all happened, huh? <clears throat> I meant the other one. Ray Smulger. Ray Smulger? Barry, take me. What could they possibly hope to achieve? Nothing good. Hey, 
Hildebrand wishes to entreat your aid in a matter of grave import. I, Hildebrand, agent of inquiry, inspector extraordinaire, do hereby ask you all to aid me in rescuing my son and putting a stop to the Grand Sir's machinations. You know, there really is no need for all that. We came because we wanted to help. I, Nashu Faithful Assistant, maker of explosives extraordinaire, do hereby present to you this fresh change of clothing. Capital, I knew I could count on you, Nashu. I shall change en route. Come, my friends, to Zenith and to Gigi. Good old Enkidu. Yeah. Rur, rur, rur. Make ready, my friends. The final battle with the Grand Sirs is at hand. Uh oh oh. It would seem my wounds were more serious than I thought. I fear I'm in no condition to confront our foes. There's but one thing that could restore me to my former indomitable self. Let me guess a hot oil massage. Don't you worry. I've got some salamander oil right here. Shall mummy give you her, her baby boy a massage? Oh, my dearest mummy, <clears throat> mother dearest, I would not impose upon you, not when my ever loyal associate Rune stands ready to minister my muscles. Oh, tell me you're embarrassed. Let mummy take care of little her Hildy's hurts. My dear wife, I know you mean well, but let Rune handle it. There's a bond which transcends time and space and personal boundaries. <laughs> yeah, personal boundaries, which mine are apparently not in consideration. That's the way of it. I'm counting on you, Rune. All right, Mama Hildy. Head over here, ya lout. Let us look no brook no further delay. Come, my friend. Coat my body in oil as you have done many a time before. Uh, I've only done it once, pal. Huh. Why do you hesitate? We have we not done this time and again? Oil me up, man. Ooh, how it soothes my aches and pains. Quickly now, knead it into my flesh. Knead as you've never needed before. Oh, the real... Uh, such furious kneading. I applaud your enthusiasm, but mayhap I urged you to excessive force. Ah, oh, oh, nay, you were in the right. Already the gentle warmth begins to spread through my body, throughout my body. The fires of righteousness burn anew in my breast. Hold, my son. Though your passion is renewed, you may yet be spurred to greater feats of Mandervillian strength. Derived from the purest essence of salamanders, the ancient legacy of House Manderville. Salamanderville. To you, my beloved son, now become a proud father. I bequeath this most sacred of oils. Salamanderville. 
Could it be that the legends were true? Your must have still shine with the brilliance of a thousand suns. No mortal man will have the power you do uh, to do you harm. Verily it is so, for by its grace did I once weather the slings and arrows of a bandit horde and bring my hammer of justice to bear upon their wicked heads. The time has come, Rune. Take this oil and help Hildy become the mandible man he was meant to be. Oh, man. I, I am ready for my final oiling rune. Oh, uh, I don't know if I am. Oh, 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 the Salamanderville, how it flows into every nook and cranny. Quickly now, lay your hands upon me. Massage me with all your might. <laughs> uh, yes, yes, that's the spirit. I can feel it building and rising, rising. I, I, I'm not comfortable with the rising messaging, but you know. Oh, such passion, such fervor. I am the inferno unbound, the tempest unleashed, but I have not yet begun to pose. <laughs> oh, I am. I am Amanda, Mander, Manderville Man! Ha <laughs> ha! The Salamanderville is my word. I have never felt so alive. Such vibrant colors, such intense sounds, such fragrant smells. Riding passion oil, do I need to show my ID? I think you might, man. I think you might. Mother, father, rune. It was your oils and your strong yet tender fingers which opened my eyes to the glory of creation. I am a gentleman, Inspector Reborn. Now, that being said, I, I wouldn't mind getting a massage where I saw the glory of creation myself. I'm not... I'm not poo-pooing a massage here. <laughs> Onward to Zenith. No matter the laws of nature they pervert or the limits they break, the Grand Sirs can do not to stop me.
grand sirs, I have come for my son. How must we do this now? We have a dragon to slay. There's no need for any of this. The war is over. But not for long. The worm's death will give rise to a new era of fire and blood. And we, having consumed his eyes, will use our new powers to win untold glory on the battlefield. Our legends will echo in eternity. He would doom countless innocents for glory. No, I will not. I won't allow it. Over my dead body. Or be it for us to deny you then. This is the end for you. The ultimate end. Wowzers. Inspector. Have faith, my love. He is our son. Gigi, my beautiful boy. Pray do not look on me with such pointy eyes. Let Papa Hildy take you home to our gazebo. Stop calling me that. My name is Vivi. Vivi. I remember everything. My powers. My purpose. My grandpapa Kwan. I made them young again, but it's not enough. I need more. More. I need the worm's haze. And then I can finally bring him back. I'm sorry, Gigi, but no, you cannot. Grandpapa Kwan is gone. He's right, Gigi. Mayhap you could restore his corporeal form and breathe life into it. But his soul, what made him your grandpapa, is forever beyond your reach. That's not true. I can't restore anything to its ideal form. To the way it should be, even Papa Kwan. Even you, Papa Hildy. Please, Gigi. You have to stop. If, you're, if you keep using your power, you'll die.
I don't understand. Your clothes are still dirty and tattered. Ha! <laughs> ah. As they should be, GG. For my every waking moment is as the gods intended. Every day I live life to the fullest. Every day I enjoy grand adventures. I found your grandpapa's research notes. What he gave you wasn't the power to make things the way they were. He gave you the power to change the world. To make things the way you yourself believe they should be. That's why your magics have no effect on the inspector. Because you know in your heart that this battered and bruised form of his, in its own re in in its own way, right. My thoughts exactly, Inquisitor Seer, and it is for this self-same reason that you were unable to make Grandmaster Quan younger. In your heart, you knew there was naught that needed to be changed. Your beloved Grandpapa was exactly as he should be. Your every day was to be treasured and worthy of celebration. And then, what about the Grand Sirs? Why was I able to make them young again? All you truly know of them were the stories they told. Wondrous tales of daring do by heroes in the prime of their lives. No wonder you were able to envision them as such. That's all they ever talked about. When they were young and... Free and full of fire. At first, Archmage's Quan didn't understand the true nature of your abilities. He struggled to deduce why you could not make him younger as he originally intended. Eventually, he realized that your fond memories of him were preventing you from conceiving of him as anything but an elderly creator and that the only way to achieve his goal would be to take them from you. But you were all he had left in the world. No, no longer a mere mammoth, but a friend, family, his only family, his grandson. He couldn't bear to lose you, so he renounced his quest for immortality. But... I still lost my memories in the end. He was afraid of leaving you all alone in the world. Afraid that the others would attempt to take advantage of you and your magics. So before he died, he decided to take your memories from you after all. To protect you. But despite his best efforts, something remained. Something stronger and more powerful and more resilient than anything Archmage's Quan ever dared to dream. You were never broken, Gigi. You were never abandoned. All he wanted was to set you free. Free? Free to do what? Whatever you like, Gigi, don't you see? That was all, that was his final gift to you. A new life, a new story, all your own. This has all been very, very touching, but we're not getting any younger. Well, you aren't at any rate. We have suffered your meddling long enough, and I intend to use this trap to kill the worm. But since you are so perfectly positioned...
Whoa, shit. Freaking cool. I am Vivi, grandson of Archmaeus Kwan and Gigi, son of Hildebrand. <laughs> Could have read that quicker, damn it. That's pretty heavy. Oh, there's the squats. It's like it never happened. The last of his strength, he turned back the hands of time. Not just for the pillars, but for us all. He made us all as we once were, as we were meant to be. After all that gallivanting about, I get bugger all. What about my misspent youth? Does not meant to be this bloody old. Ha ha ha! Such a fine day. Never have I squatted with such perfect form. I may well have reached my physical peak. Oh my god. 
Ah, what rot! At your age, you daft sod, you look foolish. You should be grateful. Gigi saw what you uh, had become and gave you a second chance. That was our second chance to relive our glory days. It was all rather silly though, wasn't it? Maybe Quan had the right of it. Maybe it's not so bad growing old. I was a coward when I was young. But now that I'm old, I'm not afraid to say things like, I love you, Doris. Whoa! Hehehehe. <laughs> You're a blind bloody fool, gone spot. I say, am I dead again? Quite alive, Inspector, along with everything else, thanks to Gigi. The Grand Sirs are also in our custody. Ha ha ha! That's my boy! Where is the little tyke anyway? Oh no. Gigi, he... Gigi embarked on a grand new adventure. He's... he's no longer with us. I see. That's what he wanted, then. Then I could not be happier for him. I'm sure Archmagus Quan would feel the same way. What do we do now, Inspector? Is it not obvious, Nashu? The wide world beckons to us. With the promise of mystery and wonder, we shall resume our never-ending quest for cases perplexing and profound. And perhaps one day, we shall meet young Gigi again. To admit it, but this whole mess has got me thinking that maybe, maybe it wouldn't be so bad if I really did have a grandson. You did right by Gigi Hildy. Your father and I can see that. We're proud of the man you've become. And I am proud of you too, mother. For finally coming to terms with the ephemeral nature of physical beauty and allowing yourself to age gracefully. Oh, you did not just say that. You dumb, dumb man. Oh, you are gonna get it. Yep. Ha 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 
Oh, look at that. Gracefully, was it? I fear I've had failure to communicate. Oh, shit. <laughs> there he goes again. Wait for me, Inspector. Wait. <laughs> Hawk, what is that curious light I spy in far eastern skies? This oh so familiar scent which fills my nostrils. Uh, do I smell a case? Worry not for me, my friends, or wherever the wronged want for succor, I, Hildebrand, shall be there till we meet again. Ha! Ah. <laughs> awesome. I say, you do know that so long as core remains intact, little Gigi's not actually dead. It's alright. You should try a tears, boy. There's no need for all this moping about. He's fallen into a dormant state because he used up all his aether. His core gradually recharges and draws upon the aether ambient, ambient aether. And in time, he will awaken from his torpor. I shall tend to the child for now. Awesome. Awesome. As for these three, I should be glad to take them back to Ishgard in your stead. A most generous offer, my lord. But hardly necessary. After all, tis my duty to bring them to justice. Oh yes, it w was my duty. After everything I said to the young Inquisitor, I can't go back to Ishgard. They'll toss me in a jail and throw away the key if they don't kill me outright. So go to Idleshire and live in Hildy's gazebo. Someone ought to be look after it while he's away, no? That doesn't sound all that bad, actually. Well, glad am I to accept your offer. There we go, buddy. Awesome. And frying that huge frying pan. Ugh, I suppose there's nothing for it to wait until he comes back down. It was a most graceful strike, my love. You haven't lost your touch. Did you do? Ha <laughs> ha. Perfect. Awesome. All right, folks, I think this is a this is a good spot to stop her for the night. But in a couple of good hours tonight, we will continue on. Uh, next week, uh, but this coming Wednesday, we've got to wrap up Pandemonium. 
and probably start uh, the Mythis raid. Uh, but the night's not over here. <laughs> uh, alas, alas, it is. It is for me, good sir. Uh, I think this is a, a great place to stop it. I'm getting, uh, I'm getting old man tired. <laughs> Had a had an awesome busy day today, but uh, yeah, we will uh, we will be back Tuesday night with Baldur's Gate three with Creative Canuck, and then Wednesday night I will be back to doing the raids of N Walker and uh, and beyond. Uh, hopefully, I'll be able to get in a couple more uh, older raids uh, prior to Dawn Trail coming out, uh, and then yeah. Uh, sky's the limit, my friends. Uh, be good to each other um, and be good to yourselves, of course. And this is your pal Rune Weird signing out for the night. Take care, folks. <laughs>